Yeah, my name is Ofor Ochiko Sotas. Nice greetings to all of you. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Here we shall be discussing about Lego projects or long SF projects. How to write project A long. So here in I shall be discussing extensively. There's nothing I will not touch. I will touch everything so that if you're writing a project, there's nothing you will not see here. But the only thing is that you need to choose. Because you know project differs. Project past project. Depending on the method you are using to write, but I will state everything in this very video so that you understand project very well. Once you once you do my this time, once you do my this very channel and this very topic. So number one is Lego research. Finding Lego research. But we always say researchable topic. You need, to, you need to look for a topic that is researchable. You don't just go and look for any how topic. So that you can be researched. That is why the thing of this is project talk. This is this is project. No no supervisor, no scholar, no lecturer will approve any project that is not researchable for you. So once you bring that is the sense of approval of projects in university, both undergraduate, diploma, postgraduate, maybe masters, PhD, it must be what? Researcher. Look that. Then when you bring that research topic means when you bring research topic, but let me define what what researchable topic is all about. It is all about you know, getting a topic who might have written on it. People might have said, somebody might have said something on it. That is what it means by being researchable. It's not someone, some, 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 someone has not written because research is you getting something that is searchable. What people have experienced, what people have seen, that's, that's what it means by you being researchable. They're not just going to bring something that is not possible, something that has not happened. If you something that has happened, people have might have written on it. That's what it means for you to be researchable. Then let's move to the first one is cover page. In cover page, we talk about um, your name, your name, you, 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 a little introduction of yourself and the, your school. That's what happens in cover page. Then the title page, you do the same, but you advance it a little by saying this um, this project submitted by me. But also think there are some things you have to say there, but you have to advance it. It is always more bigger than. The write-up is always more bigger than the title and um, cover page. Title page is always bigger than title page. So they are not the same thing. There are some differences. Though there is some what is called divergence and the convergence between two of them. But if you still have any question in my video, you can you are free to ask. The third one is um, clarification. This is where you clarify your readers or people who go to your project. Because you know once after writing your project, your project must be in your school. It will be in your library, your school library, in your faculty. All this will be submitted you have a copy. Because who will be going through it? Yeah, let's discuss um, more education um, more certification and the direction. The certification is where you where you write that this work is satisfied. There's a statement that, that will clarify that this work is satisfied. You sign. The top of the declaration, that's where you declare that you take an oath. It's not just an oath that it was written by you. That I did not copy anybody's work at all. Like it is your original work. That you did the work by yourself. That's what is called that declaration. It's just like an oath. After that, you get dedication. Dedication is like you just say hey, this work is dedicated to the God Almighty. Or you dedicate to your parents, or you dedicate to police, depending where you want to dedicate it to. So that is the question for you. Then after the question, move further to talk about acknowledgement. This is where you acknowledge people. Mostly, you acknowledge God. Some people acknowledge whatever they want. Some people acknowledge the, what they worship or what aided them. But mostly, people acknowledge either God, like someone like I always acknowledge God. You acknowledge. Um, people that help you in writing the project, maybe people that you may have a researcher, you know, you know some, this is a research work, you may have a researcher, you may, you may not be the researcher, as a point that now you go write a project, you send Mr. Mr. A is writing a project, you send Mr. B to go and research for you, you can acknowledge that your researcher, yeah, it is allowed, you acknowledge your parents, 
your lecturers, your dean, your ratio dean, your supervisor, your friends, your um, um, family, good helpers, people that help you, your good wishers, you have to acknowledge all of them, depending people want to acknowledge in one way or the other, people that aided, especially maybe from the level we started the program, the social level, this way I acknowledge them. Yeah, we talk at, now talk about table of contents. Table of contents is where you list the content of your project. Everything discussed in your project, even all this I'm saying now, everything from chapter 1 to final chapter 1, chapter 1 to chapter 5, most projects, some people have even chapter 6. But majority of projects have chapter 1 to chapter 6, chapter 1 to chapter 5, sorry. So this is where you state them in a table format. Then after your table of contents, you state what is called abstract. What is abstract? Yeah, let's discuss abstract. Abstract is summary of your work. Most times it doesn't exceed 250 words. So it is very hard. Or some people will tell you half or half page of your book, half page of your paper. What is abstract all about? Brief introduction of your work. After that, Brief introduction of um, statements of problem, brief introduction of um, aims and objectives, brief introduction of um, significance of study, brief introduction of summary of your work, brief introduction of um, conclusion, then brief of your recommendation. You have to recommend that your recommendation, you have to brief it too and add it to the book. It should not exceed. 250 words most time, even if it's less than on behalf of your people, depending how your project provides your one seat because you have the financing. So, so that is how it is done. The another one, let's let's move to let's move to um, chapter one. Chapter one is talking about chapter one is major projects, and I major projects, which is introduction. Background, introduction of the study, background of the study, that's what we discuss in chapter 1. What is that introduction and background? Most times they fuse it together, but they are not sent. Introduction is just introducing your work, saying what you know about your work, your work is also is from there, saying the origin or something like that, briefing it just in a, in a, you know, depending on your supervisor will decide, but just talking what you know about your work, especially from the origin for some places. then. Background is what you're talking about. That background, deep history, how it started. You have to trace it. So that is what about that's that's what background is all about. Then after that, you move to move to statement of problem. What is statement of problem? The the the, the problem that made you to embark on your research work. The problem that made you to embark your research work. You know, it is a problem that you're trying to, to, to solve. Forget that education is going to an inside. What education is all about is for you to bring a particular problem and solve. After some people, if anybody that has that problem should go and read that research work. But now everybody is copying each other. Even faculty is copying faculty. People are just copying, doing anything they want. They don't even do research again. So, another thing that people are not put, another thing that causes it is provide some supervisors will make the work so difficult. So, I always advise supervisors always to calm down in handling students so that they will not make them to be copied. There are some things you know that it is not possible. You allow them, you help them safe. So, that is, that is what it's all about. So, what am I saying? You need to make it to be easy for your students. So, so that's the reason why they should, you should only allow them or you should always get what is called um, a problem that you can solve. Because that is taking a problem. You state the problem that made you to embark on that project. And after that, let's move to aims and objectives. What is aims and objective? Aims and objective is you stating your reasons of writing the project. Sometimes it's a two or three. Numbers, now number one, number two, number three, or four, or thereabout, depending on your supervisor, state your reason of embarking on that project. Then, after that, let's talk about significance. Significance of the study. Significance of the study is the benefits, the people who benefit from your work. Is it students? 
is it three dash? Is it business people? Is it police? Is it is it armed forces? Is it Boko Haram? Who and who who and who will benefit? This is what you should state in the student stance of the story. Then after that, we we'll move to the definition of terms. The definition of terms is where we state the those difficult words that very that people may not know the meaning, and we define they break those things down into pieces in a way that people will understand. Yeah, let's discuss synopsis of the study. Synopsis of study is either you call synopsis or structure of study, structuring that your that your work again in a way that as in all those your work bringing them together. The one chapter one, and I say I discuss background, statement of problem, case objective, two, I discuss literature review, all this is what you should bring together in that of your structure. Structure of the study or synopsis of the study. That's what it's all about. Then we we'll go down to research methodology. Research methodology is where we bring the type of research methodology we use. Maybe we use a primary method, secondary method, doctrinal method. If you go to my the one of the one of the videos I did on Lego research, right? You can see more of this. What it's all about. What it's all about the method I want to use. Primary method is always go to mathematics, questionnaires, the solving question. Most 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 lawyers will use the doctrinal method and secondary method. That's what we use mostly in law. Then <coughs> we we'll talk about scope and limitations. Scope and limitations are those things that are limited us. Sometimes some people don't some people, some people add it, some, some people don't include some people include this one. Scope and limitations are those things that are limited us, maybe finance, busy life. Work time frame depending the one that recruited you. That's what that that is what it is all about. And let's talk about research questions. Research questions is where you ask questions. That is two or three. Ask um, when you ask question, you better answer. Any question that you ask here, you better answer it. Ask some question that will, that will question that will aid your research work depending on the topic of your research work. You ask the question based on that. Then we we'll talk about justification of the study. Justification of the study is justifying your work, making your work very simple. As in justifying, as in saying, making it fact, justifying, saying the truth. As in making justice, say, this is what I was here, this is what I know about this work. That's what it's all about, justifying it. Making, as in, as in doing justice to your work. Then, study. Area of study is the area that you are carrying your research on. For instance, if you are carrying your research here in Enugu, as in you must narrow your research work. You cannot just say uh, um, examination of examine. Uh, you cannot just say um, what is it called? Um, responsibilities of workers. Workers where? Responsibilities of workers where? You must say responsibility of workers in Enugu. Responsibility of workers in Lagos. Responsibility of workers in Nigeria, you must narrow it down to somewhere else. That is what is that is what talking about, about um, area of the study. That that area you mentioned, that area your your right, your touching. That is what it's all about. Then let's talk about footnoting. Footnoting is if you want to get footnoting, let's start from footnoting is like referencing. In your computer, you, you click on referencing. Once you click on referencing. You see footnote, you click on footnote, it comes at the end of every page. You reference. Depending the, the method you guys are using to reference, you reference there. So every work, every raw work must carry must carry footnote. Footnote is method law law used, especially in Africa and Nigeria. Western words have already uh, 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 scrapped it out. But Nigerians are still using it and Africans are still using it. So you need to know how to use it. Reference your work there. That's what note. That's what note is all about. Then let's move to chapter two. The chapter two of your work, starting from introduction. You need to introduce your work once more again. And this work is talking about social team. It's all about social team. It is about social team. We we'll discuss social team. We we'll list those things we discuss. I say we we'll discuss literature review. We we'll discuss the review. We we'll review. We we'll discuss conceptual review. This is this what you should produce with, 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 to, to, to run with your topic, with your research topic. 
Then after introduction come to the picture review. What's the literature review all about? Literature review about you reviewing other people's work, saying what other people have said in your work. But explain it in a way to understand. Bring other people's work, say it in a way, say it in a way, as in paraphrase it. You don't just copy it. You need to put other people's work, paraphrase it, add your own meaning, as in add your own word. That is what is called um, review. That is what is called literature review. Lit no, the literature means writing. Review means reviewing. As in writing about people's this thing, talking about it, talking about people's this thing. That's what means review. That's that, 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 that's not review. Literature means writing. Review means reviewing those people's work. That's what you do in literature review. And after that, we come to theoretical framework. What is theoretical framework? Theoretical framework is where we mention theories. There is no department that does not have a theory. Law has theory, major has theory, science has theory, all would has has theory. So you need to bring those theories that are related to your research work. You don't just go and bring any theory that does not relate to your research work. No. You must bring a theory that is related to your research work to back it up. You need to state those theories and say what they do and what, how it related to your work. You need to still talk about it there. Then let's move to conceptual framework. Conceptual framework is talking about the concept, the ideas, other post ideas. You need to bring other post ideas to back it up in that conceptual framework. After bringing it, after bringing it, summarizing it, due to your, that's in, you write it, you paraphrase it, sorry, yeah, you paraphrase it, then we move to summary. You summarize oh, everything you say again. You need to still summarize it at this ending point. After summarizing this, then move to chapter 3. What is chapter 3 all about? Chapter 3 is all about methodology. Methodology. Methodology in the sense that that method you stated in your chapter 1, maybe primary method, secondary method, doctrinal method, you need to bring it back again. This is where you now use it extensively. Okay, um, let's, start, let's continue our methodology. Um, in law, Sometimes, especially when you're using doctrinal method, you may not use methodology, method, but you can use data. This is where you put in your data method. As in data is those things, those things, or those things your project is talking about. This is where you bring everything that your project is talking about. That's data. Then, depending the type of um, research methodology you're carrying out, if you're using primary method, this is where you have to apply. As in, this is where you have, this, this, this is this is where you apply uh, what you call the um, area of the study. The type of area, the area you use, this is where you, this is where you apply your sampling. If you're using questionnaire, this is this is where you state the type of sampling you're using, how you use your sampling. Discuss um, this is where you source of data. This is where you discuss your source of data, as in where you got your data from. You don't know you should state it there where you got your data from. You state where you got your data from. Then the next one is population. It's in chapter three. You state the population. As a population of the study. How populated are uh, depending the area and depending the population you are using. But the population must be accurate to you. And that mathematics here if you're using primary method. Then sample techniques. And sample techniques is where you sample it. They tell all the size. It is not sample technique, sample size. Then after that, we talk about data collection, data method. Depending the type of data collection you did, you stated there. The data collection you, you made, you stated there. As in how you collected your data. This, this is data collection. You're talking how you collected your data. You tell, have to tell us how you collected your data. Then add it down again. You need to analyze your data analysis. You need to analyze it again. Analyze it one after the other. And tell us how you get it. You have to analyze it again. Do it, but it's just a brief analysis. The major work is in fact chapter four. Let's move to chapter four. You are saying we discuss um, we discuss method of data analysis in chapter three. But in this chapter four we are now. You have to now analyze those work. Now, in chapter four is data analysis. This is why you have to analyze it depending on the method you are using. If it's doctrinal method. You need to just state, uh, 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 you need to just analyze, but you don't use mathematics. You analyze your work. 
depending on the topic of your work. But if it's primary method, you need to you need to state you need to use tables. Use tables after table, you analyze it one after the other, and one as in how do I explain it now? Once the first table should let me just assume that you're writing about any good primary school. The first table should be talking about that any good primary one. The one should be talking about any good primary two. And once after the table you explain, 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 and you explain, you explain, you explain, you explain you're explaining this your chapter four using chapter one. If it is primary research method, they are not using that of that your research questions. All those of your research questions from A to Z will be answered here. The first one will answer, second one will answer, third one will answer, fourth one, depending on how many it is. This is where you now need to analyze those questions. You ask them via your via your questionnaire. Depending on the method you are using. That's another thing. Analysis, you have to do result analysis. That result you got, you need to analyze your results. You write this one after the other. After analyzing your, as in those results you got, you need to analyze it as in, analyze it, explain it one after the other. After explaining it, you now need to summarize it. So now the summary should be about maybe 250 words. You just want to just summarize it. Summarize everything written so far in that chapter 4. You will move to chapter 5. Remember, remember you, have to, you have to summarize your findings in chapter 4, the case. You need to summarize your findings in chapter 4. Then this chapter 5 is where you do your discussion. Depending on the format your school is using and the type of research you are carrying out, you now do what is called discussion. After discussing your work extensively, again, as in those things you've said so far, you need to discuss it again. <laughs> Maybe a page or half page, then you move to conclusion. You need to conclude your work briefly, maybe half page, half page, talk briefly what you what you what, what you know about in concluding aspects. Then you move to summary. You need to summarize your work briefly as in bring this. So, so this summary is different from the abstract and abstract abstract I talked about before. This summary is different from it. So it does summary in a in another way, as in not just those things, this one just you to just in your own way, just summarize it, bring it together. Not it's more not follow that format. Just abstract has no format, unlike this one. This one doesn't have that kind of format. Don't just summarize it in your own way, but it must be summary. That's the most important thing. Then you move to the recommendation. You need to recommend because this is a research work. You need to recommend what you expect your 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 your, your readers or people that, that are looking at your work. You need to recommend a solution or prefer a solution which is recommendation so that so that anybody that reads, anybody that goes through your work will not make that mistake again. That's the aim of this recommendation. Then after that, um, for that research, you need to you need, you need, you need to you need to forecast or predict or write some things you expect another researcher to carry out on this further research work. So depending on the format your school is using or what you're writing on. Then after this, your your forecasting or predicting or stating the the what you want them to to research on, they will move to bibliography in law, other department course of reference. Then there is where you now reference extensively. It's different from footnoting. This is where you now reference extensively people that you might have. Uh, 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 mentioned earlier enough on that your literature review, those people put it in conceptual review, those people put it in introduction to your work, there is some work that you put it there. All those work in your footnotes, you need to now bring them here and state what it is all about. So what do you do here now? You come over here, you use the style that, that your school is using, some people like Nigeria is using Nigerian Teacher Association, Nigerian Law, Nigerian Law Teachers Association method, so people are using upper style, I always prefer using upper style, which means American Psychological Association style. Depends the style you, you are told to use. You must not use another style. Whatever style you are told to use, that's the style you use. I always say son and force, then I abbreviate your names. Maybe if it's okay, if it's Ben, you put B after your surname, you put B, your full surname, you put B, dot, comma, dot. No, you just put dot, dot, then comma. After comma, you put a um, parenthesis, date. That place, that's where date is, the year. That will be there, not even date. Year will be there. After parenthesis, comma. Then depending where you got your work from. Is it from Jonah? You title the name first. 
If it's Jonah after the name, you write, you write the Jonah's name. If it's a work, you just write the work name, write publication name, depending the, where you get it from. Then always know that that's your title. That title of that work will be a italics. Then you get that one, you get it after, after the, the title of the work. If it's Jonah, you write the name of the Jonah, then the edition that it is. But people may go and check. Then after that, you write publication and the year of publication. That is how to reference. There are some, some, some departments or some universities or some institutions. They include implications of research, research studies, as in the implications for that research work. The implication is the implication as in, if, in case if you didn't apply it, what, what, what implications or disadvantages you will get? That is what this very section is talking about. With this, I'm done with analyzing what Lego project is all about. I did extensive work here. Most things I say may pass something, not most things may not apply in your own, but at least there's nothing that applies in your own, you will not get here. So enjoy this very oh, enjoy this very lecture. Thank you very much for watching. Please always like, always like my work, subscribe my work. You can get my you can you can get me on WhatsApp plus two. Three, four, eight, zero, three, five, four, six, nine, three, five, seven. It must be for reasonable something. Don't talk nonsense when you're meeting. Please just try to talk something reasonable so you can chat and become friends.